Hey guys, welcome to today's Vehicle Visionary. Today I'm back at Yoakum Toyota here in Shreveport, Louisiana, and this is one of the 6,000 that are going to be produced 2021 Toyota Corolla Apex models. If you're wondering where does the name Apex come from, it actually is an offshoot basically from the old AE86. And this model competes with the Honda Civic Si, the Subaru WRX, and the Volkswagen GTI. And ranges between $25,000 and $30,000 depending on options. It's based off of the SE and XSE trim levels. And here is something that I think will help make this model more popular. It's not only available with a six speed manual transmission, which is obviously a plus, there is also a CVT. And I know a lot of people have varying opinions on those CVTs. The interesting thing about this one is that it mimics a 10 speed automatic transmission. So you don't have that typical experience of the single speed CVT where it just kind of stays in that one single gear range all the time, you actually have that mimicking of a 10 speed automatic transmission. There are shifter paddles and a sport mode. So quite a few features here. And the thing I really like here is that Toyota has literally tuned the chassis, the suspension for performance. So it's not just an exterior cosmetic look with special badging or anything like that. It actually drives the way you would intend it to for something that has a little bit more performance than the average Corolla. I know I said that this is not all about cosmetics, but it does have cosmetic flair to it to give it a more sporty look. It does have a lower stance. That's not just because it has a body kit on it that makes it look lower to the ground. Like I said, the suspension, the shocks, all that stuff are tuned for performance. It has springs on it. They're gonna allow it to be a little bit lower, but let's talk about what you're gonna find here as far as features and functionality. That's the good thing is that Toyota actually tested all of the aerodynamic qualities of this model. So there is a lot of functionality here with that lower front splitter that actually has a very nice sporty look to it, not only with the black finish on it, but if you'll notice, of course, that's gonna start on the side of the front fender, works its way all the way around, and you do have a little bit of space right here between the splitter where it ends and the front fender. So a little bit of area for air to actually pass through there. That's actually going to help with aerodynamics a little bit. And while the vent look alike here, we'll call that a faux vent basically, that's not functional. There's not actually an air curtain there, so that is actually just for looks. But to really accentuate that, you've got the surround here that is bronze, and that's gonna carry on to the side of the vehicle. We'll take a closer look at that shortly. But of course, like I said, you're gonna have those typical features and functionality of the SE or XSE trim levels, LED headlights, LED taillights, Overall, some very nice looking lines here. You're gonna notice the badging is all blacked out here. And I do like the fact that right here on the hood, when you look at those lines in just the right light, it doesn't just go straight back. It's just something that's different. I like that fact that it actually comes up and it curves off to the side like that, just giving a little bit more of a racy look. Maybe not as easy to see on the white exterior color here, but like I said, we're trying to keep from squinting too much in the sunlight today, so I'm here under the canopy at Yoakum Toyota. But let's talk about what you can expect to find here under the hood and what the primary benefit of the engine combination is. And here under the hood, you will find the naturally aspirated. That might be a little bit of a surprise to some people considering the competitors here, but it is a naturally aspirated two liter four cylinder, 169 horsepower, 151 pound feet of torque. And like I said earlier, you do have those two transmission options. If you don't want the CVT, obviously you've got the option for that six speed manual. Now here is the benefit that I mentioned earlier. It's gonna be gas mileage. 30 miles per gallon in the city, 38 estimated out on the highway, 33 total combined between the two. All right, guys, let's talk about the side exterior and what you're gonna find. Of course, you're gonna have black exterior trim along with those black 18-inch wheels. Definitely gonna give it that much more sporty look. But like I said, 
it doesn't just have the appearance of being lower, it actually is. Now, one thing I'm asked a lot if I don't cover it in my videos is about the side view mirrors. Does it have a turn signal indicator built in? Yes, it does. So for those of you who are curious, yes, that's what we have here. And you're gonna notice here with the side door sill, of course, that black trim accented with the bronze. So that's gonna give it a better look, not just one solid color. I like how that really kind of grabs the attention. But one thing I'm gonna bring your attention to back here, just like we saw on that front splitter, you're gonna have that little separation point right here on the rear of the door sill. Again, intentional with aerodynamics. You've got just that little bit of gap there between the body and the door sill itself. It allows air to pass right through that area. But that's not the only place where you're going to find these nice little treatments on the vehicle. But one of the biggest advantages to this super white exterior color is found here on the roof. Again, you've got that blacked out roof right here. I really like the way that looks. Of course, the shark fin going to be blacked out too right there. But I like the fact that that just kind of has that attention getting look to it. Now, one thing that I would do if I owned this one and I realize there'll be varying opinions on this, but I like to be different, even though I like the black up here a lot. Can you imagine a carbon fiber finish? You could obviously do that with a wrap or you could just leave it like it is one way or another. I think it looks very nice, very sporty and accomplishes its desired purpose. And to finish off the exterior look, we do have the color keyed rear spoiler right here. And while it's not a very large and pronounced rear spoiler, it is there nonetheless a nice finishing look. Again, everything that can be blacked out here, the badging is blacked out. You've got more trim here. Of course, those LED taillights. And just to give you a quick look here at the lower portion of the rear bumper, again, kind of mimicking that black we saw on the front end with the front splitter and Let's take a quick look here into the truck. I'll give you the cargo specs and all that information. You got your cargo net here if you wish to take advantage of that. And something I get a lot of questions about, is there a spare tire or a tire repair kit? I think we'll get a lot of thumbs up on this point. It is a spare tire located underneath the floor with all the tools necessary to make that change. Of course, you can lower the rear seats to maximize cargo space if you so desire to do so. And one more quick thing before we hop into the back seat and start looking at the interior, here's a quick exhaust clip. As you're going to notice, you've got that exhaust coming out here as single exhaust. But of course, another upgrade you're going to get on the Corolla Apex. And as we hop into the interior of this model, it's not so much that there's a lot of space that's additional to what you would normally have or anything like that. But as you begin to look around the interior at the door panels, the finishes that you're going to find there, that does continue that apex sportiness from the exterior into the interior. I really like the way all that just kind of flows into the interior, not only with the door panels, you've got your door bins there, not the biggest you're going to find, but they're not tiny either. You could still throw some things in there. Even a couple of vehicle visionary t-shirts would fit if you wanted to throw those in. And you of course are going to find that you have the fold down armrest and the cup holders here. If you want to use those now being that this isn't a very large interior, you're not going to find dual air conditioning vents back here on the rear or connectivity. But again, you got to consider the price point in this day and age when you can buy a vehicle that has the functionality and features such as the handling characteristics of this particular Corolla. Well, to be under $30,000 is pretty good, but there's going to be some things you won't necessarily expect to find. But again, there are people out there in this day and age who are going to actually find that favorable. I'm sure some of those people will leave comments on this video and say, yeah, I really like something that's a little more simplified. I know on some of the other vehicles, the Chevrolet Spark that I've done, vehicles such as that, that actually have crank windows and manual locks, even a manual transmission, there is still a segment of car buyers that really like simplicity like that. 
And by no means am I trying to say that this Apex Corolla is simple, okay? Am I trying to compare it to the Chevrolet Spark before anybody leaves a comment that says such a thing? But if somebody does, I will definitely give you the timestamp on where you can come back and watch the video and hear what I just said. That's for those YouTube correction Nazis that watch videos just so they can correct people. Let's talk about the features and functionality here. Technology is abounding here, as you would expect. SE or XSE trim level, quite a bit there on these Corollas. Got your dashboard here, I'll give you a good look at that. And of course, with your steering wheel mounted controls, and one thing I forgot to mention earlier before I talk about the steering wheel mounted controls and the functionality there, I didn't mention safety features. Of course, you've got Toyota Safety Sense, and I will give a partial list on the screen of what exactly is included there with this model. If you want to see the full list, check out the link in the description of the video to the Yoakum Toyota website. And as long as this model is in inventory, you can click on that and take a close look. Steering wheel mounted controls here, of course, quite a bit of features and functionality. You've got your cruise control. You can go through a lot of information and settings on the dashboard via the left-hand side. Like I said, you've got steering wheel mounted paddle shifters here if you wish to take advantage of those. And while they're actually pretty wide, they're not as deep as some, but for the size of the steering wheel, I think it fits very, very well. I'll give you a couple of views of what that looks like. And of course, you're going to have the controls for your headlights here on that turn signal stock right there, one of the most underused features on any vehicle. But you know what? When Toyota spec, Yokum Toyota spec this model out, they put the extra money into it so it would have that turn signal option, the blinker option, so that when you're driving down the road, if you're turning to the right or changing lanes to the right, you can push that in the up position and let people around you know what you're doing to the right or to the left. You can push it into the down position when you're turning left or turning right, or excuse me, turning left into a parking lot or changing lanes. Let's say that correctly. Probably hear about that one in the comments too. But just for those of you who might wonder when you buy a vehicle and you see that and you're wondering what exactly is that? Because you might see a vehicle driving down the road and when they're turning right, their, their right side light starts flashing and you're wondering what are they doing? How do you do that? Can my car do that? Okay, that's for you Shreveport drivers anyway. I can't say the same stuff about controlling the windshield wipers and all the functionality you'll find here on the right hand side. If people used their blinkers the way they use their windshield wipers, it'd be a lot more fun to drive. Maybe we should have turn sensing blinkers. Maybe that'll come one day, who knows? I don't know if that'll ever happen or not. Got your steering wheel here, all kidding aside. Hey, you gotta make, man, if you made it to this point in the video, you might as well laugh about something. Congratulations, I appreciate those of you who have done that, by the way. Comfortable steering wheel here, but I like the fact that, well, it just seems to be the right size. I don't know what it is about that, but I just like that. And of course, you're gonna notice that, again, looking throughout the interior here, it has that apex sporty look to it. And while you don't have the manual transmission here, you do have sport mode you can drive in. And when you pull the shifter back, you can bump it over to the left. You can either shift manually through that transmission, and I realize it's mimicking the changing of gears. I realize it's a CVT, so don't need any corrections on that, but you can still kind of get that feeling of being more engaged in the driving experience, either with the shifter paddles or with the shifter itself. Like I say, you just bump that over to the left, and there you go. Of course, you're gonna have the infotainment screen here. Plenty of options, plenty of functionality there. And of course, when you go into reverse, you're going to have the backup camera. So that's not anything unusual. For those who may not know, that was actually in the United States at least, was mandated to be on all vehicles by the year 2020. And of course, pretty much everybody was way ahead of that. A Little bit of space right here in the front of the console area right here in front of the shifter. So if you wanna store a little something up there, you can, and like I said, there's your button for turning sport mode on. If you want to, you can turn traction control off right next to that, to the right of that. And the power parking brake and brake hold mode. And for those of you who use brake hold mode, tell me about your experiences with that and when you use it. 
and of course, a couple of drink holders here. And here's something I've had some people tell me about. You can see how the lid on the console, that multitasking lid that doubles as an armrest for the driver and the passenger. I don't know if you took off down the road, that's pretty hard to push back. I've had people tell me when you take off down the road, if you take off fast enough, you can actually have that thing go back on you. I can't push that back. I have to intentionally try. If I just try with my arm up there, it doesn't happen. Now, if I held it like this, yeah, that might happen. You're going to have a little connectivity down in here, USB and 12 volt connectivity. And how much space is in this console? Well, I'm going to say about three or four. And if you fold them just right and they're the right size, probably smalls and mediums maybe, you can fit five maybe Vehicle Visionary t-shirts down inside this console. Okay guys, that's a quick tour of the 2021 Toyota Corolla Apex. Got to say a special thanks to my friends here at Yoakum Toyota. And of course, special thank you to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.